Hi, my name is Craig Frazier, and today we're going to do another installation of Candy 2O Theory. Uh, this is actually in response to a question that came online asking how to make black cherry or if we were going to make a black cherry candy. Um, we've had a couple of questions in the past concerning different colors and concerning making a specific black cherry candy. We're probably not going to do it with the Candy 2O series at Craytex, namely because you can make black cherry with the candies we have here. I gave the guy two different options because basically if you say what color is black cherry, it depends on who you're talking to and what it looks like. Uh, there's numerous different paint companies that have the term black cherry. Uh, so I kind of gave two different versions and we'll see what you guys like. We'll, do, we'll spray two different ones here. And I'm going to show you how to mix up each one of them. Now, one of them utilized uh, two candies here. It used the candy blood red and the candy black from Candy 2O. And it all, the other one used candy brandy wine and deep purple as a mix. Now the one similarity between these is they're all mixed approximately about the same. We're going to start out with some 40-30 and we're going to go 50-50, 40-30 to the candy itself and then maybe add only about 5% of reducer to it. We're going to be spraying this out of a uh, small gun, a TH2, so we don't need to really make, you know, we can make it a little bit thinner but not like as thin as it needs to be for an airbrush. We're just going to do a, t a paint sample. I have two gold-based flames here and I also left a little spear in the middle that we're going to be showing uh, what candy looks like just over the black to see which one. Because some, you might have a color you really like over a gold base or a silver base and then you spray it directly over black and you, it doesn't look as good. It's, maybe it's not what you wanted, in which case you you always want to have options. So let's start out by mixing the blood red and candy black color together to make that black cherry. We're going to start out again with our 4030. Always give all of these paints a good shake. If you got a marble in them, shake them. So I'm going to come in here. I don't need a whole lot, so I don't want to waste a lot here. I'm just going to put maybe about a little bit less than an ounce in there. And then what I'll do is it is about 6% of uh, candy blood red to the, the candy black. Now that sounds like not very much. Uh, the candy blood red is very strong and you just want to tint the black a little bit. Matter of fact, just to let you know, the candy 2O black is a little bit of a violety black anyway, so it's already pushing that red spectrum. So we're gonna go ahead and give it a good shake and I'm gonna add approximately about maybe, get close to what I added in there about you know half about 80 percent of what I added in there with the 4030 and give this a good shake. Now notice I didn't reduce it yet. We're going to be reducing this with 4011. Um, it's a little bit hot in this room. If it was a little bit cooler I would use a 4012 as a reducer but you don't want to add the reducer right away because it can shock the pigment. You want to add that after it's all mixed up. Now by itself this is already a cool kind of a blackish candy hence black candy. I'm just going to add a little bit like I only have, need to add about six percent and that's what my recommendation was to the guy. That might have been a little bit more than I needed, but you can always accommodate by adding a little bit more of the black. Now it's kind of hard to see on the stick, but if I smear it up here tall, higher, you can see the color a little bit better. And that gives a real burgundy-ish black cherry. Like I said, there's not really any definition of what black cherry looks like, but that's pretty dang close right there. I kind of like that. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and use that color. And I'm going to add just a little bit, like maybe about 5% of reducer. You want this, you know, going through an airbrush, you want about the consistency of milk. You want this a little bit thicker than that. Because remember, the more reducer you add, the longer it's going to take to dry, and the more coats you're going to have to apply, especially with, a, with an airbrush or a small spray gun. Now, the gun we're going to use here is a, um, a TH2. And uh, this is a gun from Iwata that's a little bit bigger than the TH1, obviously. And it's got a fan uh, pattern head on it, so this is great for spraying candies on small objects. Normally, I would filter this out, but the way this cup is with this, it caused me a little bit of a problem. So I'm going to actually go without doing a non filtered spray out on this because we're just doing a test anyway. If this was anything else, I'd probably use two cups filtered into one to make sure I got anything out of there. Another thing I'd do is I'd wait about, about 15 minutes or so uh, before I actually sprayed anything. This is really important with a full-size spray gun. Uh, you, you want the 4030, the reducer, and the candy to sit there and acclimate. You stir them up real good, let them sit for 15 minutes. This goes for uh, any of the auto wear products. This goes for the Scenics products. This goes for any of the automotive. Anytime you know, you, you're working with an automotive large-size spray gun, you, you want your paint to sit for a little bit. So let me do a little test spray. I'm going to spray a little bit on this white 
down right here. You can see the red, but you can see it also is predominantly, you have that black in the background. So hence the black cherry right there. I just want to do a little test spray on that see how it's spraying. I kind of dig it, so it'll work. I'm going to come in and very lightly, you always want to start out with a light coat. I'm doing about three quarter overlap on it and then spraying air. We've got a lot of humidity in the studio today. So in this case, even with the, well, using the, um, normally I'd use like, uh, maybe a little bit more more of a caustic reducer to dry faster in humidity. It's hotter in here, and so I'd rather just use that 4011. Spray it on there a little on the wet side, so I'm gonna be really careful on this next coat. Spray a lot of air, a little bit of paint. Now this candy red does have a little bit of an orange tint until you build up a number of layers. And black cherry is something that literally we want this flame to almost go completely black. Only at certain angles are you gonna see that, that red coming through, that cherry red. This will also look totally different. Like you saw it has a different tone here than it does there. We're going over gold, which means it's going to actually increase the orange factor. Now you may wonder why am I going over gold on this? Um, I'm sorry, I just keep on blowing air on here as I talk. The reason I'm going gold is that when you when people refer to candies, you always hear the term candy apple. They're like, oh, I want to do candy apple red, candy apple green, candy apple violet, or candy apple cherry red. Anytime you use the term candy apple, that is going over a gold metallic base. Uh, hence the original guy, you know, Joe Balian that came up with it, was trying to imitate a candy apple. And a red candy apple uh, is actually uh, over a very golden delicious uh, base, you know, golden delicious apple, very light colored yellow base or gold base. Um, if you ever seen those candy apples that are black at the, at the fair, those are actually red apples dipped in the candy red. So we're looking for something that's very, very dark. Uh, black cherry is darker than like the deepest candy apple red you'd ever have. So when looking at this, you're gonna, the first thing you're gonna say, oh man, it's just too orangey and too dim. And layer it up and look at it. Especially out in the sun, when this thing catches the sun, especially if you have it over flake or any other metallic, right? This, this is just a gold base done with uh, Quicksilver gold. It's not gonna be as sparkly, but when the sun hits it, it really glows. Now, what if you want to fine tune this? You know, let's say you really like this color, but man, it's a little bit on the orangey side. That's fine. You could always spray it over a silver and you're gonna get a little bit less orange. What you can also do is add just a little bit, like maybe about 5% of the Sunset Magenta. There's a lot of different ways you can fine tune your candies. I always try and keep them as simple as possible. I want to give two different versions. One's gonna be more red, one's gonna be more orange. And that's why I did these two here. But you can fine tune them. There's no law saying you can't. One bit of advice, do not all of a sudden come up with a killer color that has like seven candies in it. For one thing, you'll forget how to mix them. It's a nightmare. It's a lot of extra work. It's more complicated than it needs to be. There is not a single color that you can make in my Candy 2.0 system with seven candies that you couldn't make with three. You know, there's just, that's just getting kind of silly. I'm going to put one more coat on it and... I can't really tell what it looks like from the camera because I get, I'm getting a weird reflection from these lights in here. So it almost looks black here, but it might look totally gold from your angle. I'm going to do one more coat because I can't see this color. And I'm just spraying air on it to dry it, make sure it dries. Let's see how that looks with the light. Almost has a brownish tint to it. Well, it can be I ran out of candy anyway, so we'll call the day on this color right here. I've noticed uh, when using different candies, a buddy of mine, Dan Gardner, when he sprays his candy red, he noticed that up to five coats it has an orange tint. And he would say, man, I really want that that bluish red. And I said, just keep on going. He went to nine coats. And he's like, oh my God, as soon as I got to nine coats, it flopped on me. I go. It got to a certain depth where all of a sudden that spectrum of light appeared to you. So, you know, now, 
would be better to modify and tint the color so you can get it within five coats. That, that's an argument. That's like a lot of people will argue whether or not you should do as many coats or whether you should do what are called cheater coats. Modify the colors so you can get that, that color. Well, with candies, you're not dealing with just the chroma or the value. You're also dealing with a depth issue. Now, if you start modifying the color and do only five coats, it's not going to have the same depth. It's not going to have the same look. It might have the same value in chroma, but it won't have the same depth. You, you may not even notice it unless it's side by side but it is better. So Dan's old school, I mean, hence the nickname Candyman. So he loves doing, you know, he has no problem spraying nine coats of candy on a Harley and it looks amazing when he's done. So we're gonna go ahead and let this dry a little bit and I'm gonna clean my airbrush out and we're gonna go to the next color. Okay, got the gun good and cleaned out and we're gonna go mix up that secondary color. Remember the second one was actually, didn't have any candy black in it. It was a combination of brandy wine and deep purple candy 2O. So we're gonna start out, same cup, same 4030, same shake. And I'm just gonna put a little bit, like I said, same thing as before, a little bit less than an ounce in there, not much. And uh, it is a two to one um, brandy wine to deep purple. So that basically means that, that'll be easy for me. the brandy wine in there and then come in and put approximately half of that the deep purple and then give it a good stir I could probably use a little bit more deep purple That's called your tweaking. You're allowed to tweak things. Okay, dokie. Now this will probably, this will definitely be a little bit more of the red tone, of a purpley tone, not as much orange. We still might get a little bit of orange in the very beginning. Why? Because of the gold we're spraying on that. I am still going to use the 4011 reducer. It worked out really good with the last one. I'm only going to do about maybe 5%. You don't need a lot. Stir it up. Like I said, if this is a full size spray gun, highly recommend you let that sit for about 15 minutes. Make sure I get all the reducer out of the gun. There we go. I always let my gun sit with a little bit of reducer in the bottom, a little bit of that. Helps it from the needle from sticking. And then we've got that color. Now, before I spray it on the actual flame, I wanna see how this car looks. Now, this has no black in it, no candy black. Now, if you look at that, see how this has much more pinky tone and we're gonna have to really layer it but see when we come in and we hit it hard look what the violet does brings in that really dark black that little bit of a dark blackish tone in there comes in that that can kind of kill some color for some people that may be perfect for some people at like this angle right here this color is killer but let's see what this one looks like over here on the gold right, this is the brandy wine and deep purple two to one brandy wine deep purple and if you're wondering what the percentage of the 40-30 was, 40-30 is 50-50 with the candy. So how many candies you use, the, the sum total of those candies can only be 50% by comparison to your 40-30. And I always wanna make sure that first coat, a little bit of a tack coat on there, that'll keep it from, from fish eyeing or running on me if I get too much paint on there. I have a little bit of a heavy hand, even with a small gun like this. I can't really come in and lay wet coats on this because the surface will just, it'll probably, it'll puddle and it might even bleed on the tape. So I come in and kind of blend them. Now let's say you love the color, but it's not dark enough for you. Trust me, we're only, we only really done like two, three good coats. This might be a nine coater, it might be a seven, seven coater. Now, could you add brandy wine to candy black? Sure, that's another alternative. That might just, you know, that might give you a color you like better. Like I said, there's not, there's not a general consensus. There's not a group that got together and decided what black cherry is. I will tell you one thing though, when I got a client that asked for a color, I always will tell them, bring me a sample. Every now and then they'll come in with a swatch, a sample from the upholstery, 
or they'll even come up, uh, I've had a couple of them come in with paint chips. Uh, the worst are Pantone colors because it's very difficult to match in automotive some of these Pantone colors and most of them aren't clear coated. So when you clear coat something, it has a much different look to it. But um, when they give you an example of a color or a photograph even, they show you a picture of a car, that's the color I want. Look at the car and point out the highlights in the dark areas and explain to them also a photograph much different than what it looks like in real life. And then use that to mix and match, you know, blend your color and match it. I also will try and tell, you know, customers that are very, very exacting, like, so I, I got to have this exact color this guy had in the magazine. I'll always say, well, why don't you just make it your own color? I go, why don't we take that color as an interpretation and we'll make it your own. So this color will be completely specific and unique to your, yours alone. That usually enough, especially with a custom builder, that usually convinces them enough right there. Now, even in a booth where I got a booth with a lot of air movement, I will still use the gun to help dry the paint. Do not use heat. Never use heat with the Candy 2.0 system or any of the paint systems made by Kratex. Heat's not going to work it. What heat will do is it'll dry the outside of your paint and, and trap in some of the moisture. Air motion, air movement is the very best way to make paint dry. A larger gun even. You know, there's a reason you don't paint an entire car with one of these. Take you a heck of a lot longer. But also, um, when it comes down to it, uh, you'll spray large volumes of this material through a large spray gun helps in the drying process as well because of the atomization by the spray gun and the volume of paint that's being moved. Not to mention, we use a large spray gun as a blower. It has a lot more air movement than this airbrush does. But for something small, maquettes, small products, appliances in the movie industry, fine art, uh, golf clubs, you know, you name it, graphics on helmets, even small graphics on tanks. The TH2 is killer. Matter of fact, this is, in my opinion, the absolute best gun to ever spray the Quicksilver, uh, our Quicksilver Gold with. It just sprays it really clean, really evenly, very good control. As you saw, I had the Quicksilver Gold on, on these flames as a base. I'm going to put like one more color down on it. Let me see. Yeah, it's quite a bit lighter, but yeah, let me get, I'll do a couple more coats. I got a clog in my brush. That's why I was acting funny. There we go. Spraying a little dry and I realized something was clogged on the gun itself. But something still is clogged there. There we go. <laughs> there we go, wow. Okay, whatever was clogged is now officially gone. I think I had something on the very end. Peeled it off my fingernail. There we go. I wonder why this was spraying so light. Like someone turned on the garden hose. There we go. Make sure this coat gets nice. I'm going to put one more coat after this and then we're going to call it a day. Because this is not, this is not a Kubrick film. We don't need this thing to go three hours. Get this nice and dry. Now, one thing you can do with these candies also, if I had flames on the car and I like the color, but maybe want to go a little bit darker, I would maybe add another coat, two coats just on the tips. We call it tipping the flames. Um, if you want, you can also even add a different color. You might even add a little bit of candy black to this and come in and just hit the flames on the tips and you'll tip them really nice where all of a sudden you'll just be like a black cherry tip on this. Or it's already black cherry flame, but real, a real nice tip on that. I'm gonna leave that right there. It's kind of on the light side. I probably could go two more coats, but we're not gonna do that. But I do want is I wanna come in and just try a couple of coats just directly over. Let me peel it from the bottom side so it doesn't peel all the masking off. This little spear that's left here. See that? Let me see how much candy I've got in this. Get a little bit on the low side. You always want to see how it looks over black. T true test of a candy 
is after two or three coats on it, you'll see it at certain angles, you can see it when you unmask it, but it shouldn't all of a sudden start changing the color of the black too much. Because a candy needs the base coat as its reflective surface, as its base. And black is not known for its reflectivity, so the more candy you put on black, you only see it at certain angles. I'm still drawing this one because I can still see it angles some wet, wet spots on it. I got this a little bit too wet, so I want to get this really dry before I hit it with another coat. It, it pebbled on me a little bit, and I should have been careful with that. That's raw powder coat I went over on this pa panel, and it shot itself a little bit. If you can build the candy up over it, it won't matter. I'm going to keep on doing this, build up a couple of coats here, and then we're going to unmask it so you can check it out when it's all unmasked. Okay, gave it about 15-20 minutes, let it dry, and then I went ahead and unmasked it, just carefully unmasked it. But you saw, no, no bleeds, no, no tape lifts, no problems whatsoever. Uh, there is a little bit more candy on this one than there is this one here. You can feel a little bit more of an edge because I hit this with a couple more coats. But uh, as you can tell, this one, this one probably has about four coats on it and uh, looks very, very dark. Well, because it's black cherry on top of black. Some people may really want that. It would be kind of cool to lay out a set of flames and just, do, just spray the, just the black cherry candy, like maybe five or six coats of it, then go ahead and clear coat it. And what you'll end up doing is getting like a candy ghost flame effect. But you see the two colors, though, completely different in the way they were mixed up as far as like one of them. This one was the candy uh, blood red with the candy black. This one was the candy brandy wine mixed with the deep purple candy. Two different color systems, very similar in the way that they look, uh, both of them over gold. Uh, you can change any way you like. Uh, we encourage this kind of experimentation. As custom painting goes, I always tell people custom painting is its own warning label. It requires you to experiment, to push it a little bit further. If you don't want to do anything new and interesting and innovative, uh, go into the refinish industry. Uh, when it comes down to custom painting, you've got to constantly be, be innovating, be constantly creating stuff. So uh, we were glad to help this person out with the black cherry color. If you have any questions, uh, please uh, utilize this forum, the Createx uh, Tech Forum, to ask questions. Uh, if you've got something that you'd like to see done, uh, who knows? We might end up doing a video, and we plan on doing quite a few more of these Candy Theory installations. So until the next time, my name is Craig Frazier, and I'll see you then.